If I could, I'll call our meeting to order. I appreciate everyone being here this evening. Um, first item on our agenda is to establish a quorum. We certainly have a quorum of our board team here, so I appreciate everyone being here. Our next item, item two, is our invocation. Uh, we're honored this evening to have Kenan Clark um, with the, uh, the Celebration Church, and he's going to lead us in our invocation. Kenan, thanks for being here. Be here. Would you pray with me? <sighs> Heavenly Father, we're just so honored and so grateful, Lord, that we have a moment to stop our busy lives and just to center ourselves and realize that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, you're the one that called us to what we're doing. You're the one that has ordered our steps. Oh, Lord, I pray that right now you've given us the opportunity to protect and direct and to educate the next generation. And Lord, I pray that the 2018-2019 school year wouldn't just be another school year. Lord, it wouldn't just be another another uh, tally mark down. But Lord, I pray that this year students would find direction for their lives. Not only would they, they level up and, and grade up and, and make the grade and make the teams, but Lord, I pray that students would find direction for their lives. And that's the direction that only comes from your hand. And Lord, I pray that this year, just the, the, the peace that surpasses all understanding would absolutely flood every mind of every faculty member, every board member, every elected official, every teacher, every coach, every student. Lord, I pray that you would somehow supernaturally have your way in the school system. I thank you that even just by inviting me to come and pray, Lord, they're inviting you into this space and into this place. And Lord, we know that anywhere you show up, magnificent things happen. And Lord, I pray that this year you would have your way. I just speak um, just a, a divine um, attention and direction for this, these specific students unlike any others. Lord, I thank you that you are putting people and, and mentors in their lives, Lord, that will have the, the patience and the wherewithal and the foresight and the knowledge and the experience to reach them right where they're at, but not leave them right there, just like you do with us each and every single day. It's in your precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Keenan. We appreciate that very much. Um, our next item is pledges. Since we uh, school's just starting back, we don't have any students to lead in our pledges, so I'll get to do that. So if everyone will stand up. Okay, I'll read our script and then we'll start with our agenda. Good evening and welcome. Uh, as president of the Board of Trustees of San Angelo Independent School District, I would like to welcome all of you to tonight's, uh, who are present at tonight's regular school board meeting. I also welcome those of you who might be watching the tape of our meeting on our public access channel, Channel 4. We appreciate your interest in our district. All items that have been, that we will be discussing this evening have been posted as required by state law. Also, as you may be aware, our board meets a minimum of two times per month, and most, if not all, of the items on our agenda this evening have been previously discussed at an earlier pre-agenda board workshop. As members of the San Angelo Independent School District's Board of Trustees, we're here to set goals, listen to reports from our superintendent, approve budgets, contracts, and personnel appointments, and to make policy for the school district. Please keep in mind that our meeting is a meeting of the Board of Trustees held in public and not a meeting of the public. However, with that in mind, we have an item on each one of our meeting agendas that allows anyone present who wishes to speak to our board team an opportunity to do so. I will make certain that we give everyone an opportunity to speak on any item not listed on our agenda. Additionally, prior to taking any votes, I will ask audience members if they would like to make any comment. Anyone wishing to make comments on any agenda item should do their best to limit their comments to three to five minutes. In compliance with state law, our proceedings are recorded and will become a part of San Angelo Independent School District's permanent legal record. In order that the tape will adequately reflect the proceedings, I ask that you please refrain from talking while others might also be speaking. And I ask, as I remind my fellow board team members, to please turn off or silence your cell phones at this particular time. Again, it's a pleasure to welcome you to tonight's meeting and thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. We appreciate your interest in the activities of our students and the business of our district. Uh, our next item, we've got several recognitions this evening, and uh, I believe Mr. Jackson's going to lead that off. So, Derek, take off.
Thank you for having me. Quick. Thank you, President Lehman, Dr. Detloff, members of the board. Tonight, it is my great pleasure to honor members of our SA, SAISD staff who have received prestigious and hard-earned recognitions throughout the course of the 2017-2018 school year. These administrators and staff members represent the brightest in the education field, not just locally here in San Angelo, but regionally and across the Lone Star State. In each of the recognitions presented tonight, you will see a common theme of hardworking, dedicated, and passionate professionals who embody our mission statement of engaging all students in a relevant and inspiring education that produces future-ready graduates. Each of tonight's honorees are advocates for our children and true champions in public education. So I'd like to begin by inviting one of our district's outstanding school leaders to stand in front of you, Ms. Chrissy Eubank. Mrs. Eubank is currently the assistant principal at San Jacinto Elementary. This past school year, she was named the Region 15 Assistant Principal of the Year by TEPSA, the Texas Elementary Principals and Supervisors Association. Ms. Eubank, Mrs. Eubank was one of 20 assistant principals from across the state of Texas recognized in June during the annual summer conference for TEPSA, which was held in Austin. She has been with SAISD since 2011. In the words of our campus principal, Mrs. Kimberly Spurgers, Mrs. Eubank is one of the very best she has ever seen in relationship building, both with students and with parents alike. During her time in the district, Mrs. Eubank has been a member of our district curriculum writing team. She also plans to start working on her doctorate degree at Texas Tech this fall. She's supported at home by her husband, Glenn, and they have two children who attend SAISD schools. On behalf of SAISD, I would like to ask Dr. Dedloff to join Mrs. Eubank at the front to present her with this certificate of recognition as the Region 15 Assistant Principal of the Year, as named by TEPSA. <laughs> this is you make Kristen. Real quick, we'd like you to go around and shake everyone's hand there, if you will. I forgot to mention that to you. <laughs> One more round of applause for Mrs. Eubank. And since we have so many of these in a row, I'm just gonna keep on going if that's okay with the board here. It is again my honor and privilege to recognize another exceptional leader here in SAISD. I would like to ask our Executive Director of Athletics, Mr. Brent McCauley, to come to the front and be recognized. I always call him Coach McCauley, so I'm going to refer to him as Coach McCauley. Coach McCauley was recently <laughs> Coach McCauley was recently named the Region Two Athletic Administrator of the Year by the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. The award is presented annually to the THSADA members in recognition of their dedicated service, leadership, and special contributions to their local and regional levels of interscholastic athletic administration. Coach McCauley received this honor during the 2018 THS ADA Hall of Honor Banquet last month in San Antonio. He is entering his 36th year in education, including stints in Dumas ISD and Canyon ISD before coming to SA ISD in 2015. Coach McCauley is supported at home by his wife, Carla, who also works in SA ISD, and they have one grown son who recently got married, so it's been a busy summer for Coach McCauley. Again, on behalf of SAISD, I'd like to ask Dr. Dedloff to join Coach McCauley at the front and present him with the THS ADA Regional Administrator, Administrator of the Year plaque.
One more round of applause for Coach McCauley. And I'll keep it going again. I am honored to recognize another of SAISD's brightest stars as I invite Macy Smithson to the front to be recognized. <laughs> Mrs. Smithson was recently named the Region 15 Elementary Teacher of the Year. She currently teaches fifth grade science at Fort Concho Elementary. She is a graduate of Texas Tech University and has taught in SAISD for nine years, including the last three years at Fort Concho. During her time in the district, Mrs. Smithson has left a huge impact on the lives of students she has taught. Her passion for kids and learning is evident in everything that she does. In the words of her campus principal, Mrs. Lori Barton, Macy is a leader that understands what this generation of kids need and how to engage them and relate to their issues and interests. Macy is the daughter of an educator. Her mom, Jennifer Tim, taught for more than 30 years here in SAISD at Crockett Elementary. She is supported at home by her husband, Steven, and they have a beautiful three-year-old daughter. On behalf of SAISD, I would like to ask Dr. Detloff to join Mrs. Smithson in the front to present her with this certificate of recognition as the Region 15 Elementary Teacher of the Year. One more round of applause for Macy, please. <laughs> now I would like to invite two of our fantastic campus leaders to the front for this final recognition. Representing the campus of Glenmore Elementary, Mrs. Misty Zesh. And representing the campus of Santa Rita Elementary, Mrs. K. Scott. These two campuses were named to the Educational Results Partnership Honor Roll this summer. The ERP is a national campaign of business and education leaders. They are a nonprofit organization that applies data science to help improve student outcomes and career readiness. The ERP recognized both Glenmore and Santa Rita campuses for their high academic achievement and student success. Schools that receive the ERP Honor Roll distinction have demonstrated consistently high levels of student academic achievement, Improvement in, improvement in achievement levels over time and a reduction in achievement gaps among student populations. Only 7% of the schools in the state of Texas received this prestigious honor. On behalf of SAISD, I would like to ask Dr. Detloff and our Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Jana Ritter, to join Mrs. Zesh and Mrs. Scott at the front to present both of them with their plaques of recognition. <laughs> Congratulations. I am, sir. That's it. Put that have one. <laughs> one more final applause for both those campuses. <laughs> and that concludes the recognition portion for this evening. Thank you all for your time and support. Thanks, Mr. Jackson. We appreciate that. Um, we'll move forward. Item eight on our agenda is, I mentioned earlier, in our script, uh, anyone wishing to make comments to our board team on items not on our agenda this evening um, can certainly do so at this time. Um, I have Keith Davis signed up, but I, I visited with Keith, and I think he, since it's on our agenda and he wants to make comments, then he can make comments at that particular time. So uh, we'll move forward um, to item nine, which is to consider all matters 
incident and related to calling and holding a bond election to be held November 6, 2018, including the, do the adoption of that order. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to General Ronnie Hawkins to lead this discussion. Thanks. Thanks. President Lehman and all the trustees of the board, it's my honor to be able to present to you the Long Range Facility Planning Committee recommendation for the, for the board. And more importantly, what I'd like to do is also recognize some other people that are a part of the committee that are in, in, involved in this entire process uh, from start to finish. We're also showing in here on the, on the screen um, previous committee leadership with Dr. May and Dr. Um, Flores. Uh, the committee leadership for right now is listed right off to the left, bottom left, and I drew the short straw, so I'm doing the presentation. <laughs> so that's how that pretty much goes right now as we, we move forward. You will see on there all of the other committee members um, that are a part of this entire process. Um, we've been meeting, we've been meeting since uh, November, quite frankly, and, and moving forward to where we're at right now. But all of the people that are on the, on the screen are people that have uh, uh, agreed to be a part of this process. When we look back from a background perspective, I'd like to take you back to 2008 uh, when the last bond was approved 10 years ago, and most importantly, what was, what was focused on by that 2008 bond was the most critical needs at the time. Not all of the needs, but the most critical needs during that period of time. And since the completion of that entire um, bond proposal and, and the completion of what was done, uh, the, the SAISD has also completed over $30 million of additional small capital improvements that are needed, but there are m many more um, major needs that, are, that we want to recognize and identify to you. As, as, you, as you look at the, the charge, okay, excuse me, as you look at the charge um, from, the, from the last bond, um, the, the commit, they were looking at the most critical needs at the time and also those small improvements. I apologize, thought I was ahead of myself there. Um, but the historical timeline that you see right now shows you how this has started back from 2005 to where we're at uh, right now, moving up to where the, the bond did fail in 2007, finally passed in 2008, uh, and the work was completed in 2013. I might also identify in, in what I would call foot stomp on that, that the work was completed under budget and on, on time, or within budget, excuse me, and on time. And since then, we've had a facility assessment that's been looking at uh, continuing needs that we'd like to put in front of you right now. And what we're really focused on are the ADA requirements that are part of any school, quite frankly, any, any public institution. Uh, we need to look at the Americans with Disabilities Act, the mechanical systems, as well as the safety and building codes uh, that, that, um, that are part of the aging infrastructure uh, within the San Angelo Independent School District. Our process and our charge comes next. What we've been doing here from 2017, November 2017, all the way through right now. We've been looking at the educational needs for all of the children, all of the students, excuse me, and aligned with the district mission, vision, and goals. But most importantly, we want to prioritize all of the current needs, both long range as well as what we look uh, in, in the evolving um, educational delivery programs uh, within the SAISD uh, as well. When we look at that and start looking for what we've done, the May Bond, uh, May Bond Committee process, we looked at the existing facilities, we took the tours, uh, we looked at the tax impact, uh, we took the uh, look, at, look at the community surveys, uh, and then we finally went through with the, the recommendation for the 2008 bond phase in, in May right there. When you look at what we prioritized, uh, we were looking at the most um, uh, the most needs for the district, excuse me, uh, and those fell into four big criteria, the benefits to the students, benefit to the commu community, the urgency of need, and finally, equity and value. We prioritized all of those and we looked at it. Uh, starting in September of 2017, we had $330 million worth of identified needs. We prioritized that to 180 and finally went down to the 148.9 million that we recommended for the May bond election. As we all know, that, didn't, that did not pass, and so we have come back together again looking at what it is that we need to do from a holistic perspective uh, for the entire community as well as organizations and, and the students 
uh, that come into SAISD. We've had small working groups to work at this, to look at this. We've looked at um, uh, surveys that have come out and we've reconvened that entire uh, committee that I showed you up in the front, front end of this. We have met twice. Uh, we have worked to, uh, to collectively prioritize all of those needs and there, we also know that there are many needs that still exist. As you look at what we have done, uh, the committee uh, looked at the proposed recap from the bond. Uh, we took the surveys that, that have gone out and talk about that in just a moment. Uh, and then we've revised our project cost analysis as well in what we're going to be presenting at, at the end of, of this recommendation here. When you look at the community survey, we received uh, great feedback, both positive as well as what, what we needed to work on. Uh, we did an online survey that ran from July the 12th to the 22nd and had the number of responses that you see on there. And we've also mailed out hard copies and the total was of 1,062 uh, total responses that have told us what it was that they thought we needed to focus in on as we move forward with the recommendation uh, that we want to present to you. Community surveys showed they were most dissatisfied with the tax rate as well as the bond amount overall. And then the final thing that was up in the top uh, tier of the dissatisfaction was the multi-purpose gym uh, at Central High School. But key areas to support uh, were in the areas of safety and the ADA that we had talked about before that came out of the facilities assessment back in 20, uh, 2014, and also the need to renovate our schools. Areas of lease support were areas for new schools as well as the athletic facilities. And we have come up, we the, the committee, the Long Range Facility Planning Committee, have come up with two recommendations uh, that we want to put in front of the, of the board right now. Those recommendations include the Long Range plan, Planning Facility providing you the, the recommendation, know that you've got to vote on that yourself, um, but we want to make sure that uh, we present to you what we know to be the consensus that came out of the meetings that we've had before, and we recommend to the no that the, the November 6 bond election be split into two propositions, um, those totaling up to the $145 million that you see on the slide right now. We will break that out for you and let you know how, those, how we came to this conclusion. Uh, as we look at it, but the bottom line that we were looking at overall was the safety uh, for our students and the aging infrastructure and the need for extracurricular uh, activities and facilities to, to, to have those extra, extracurricular activities. Under Proposition A, and we're gonna have two propositions that we present to you, Proposition A looks at our elementary schools that are still in need uh, of, of support uh, and renovation, and when I say that, we're talking about the schools that were not covered uh, in the bond election that passed in the previous bond election. And so we're trying to cover, cover those, those needs right now. And we'll show you in, in a separate slide where they're all at right now and what, what the needs are and what it is that we're going to intend to do uh, to those individual schools. You will see on here two, two schools that are feeder schools into Lakeview uh, and the rest of them are feeder schools into uh, San Angelo Central High School. Uh, also under the Proposition A, uh, we're looking at the middle school, Glenn Middle School, and also the Central Freshman Campus and the new Alternative Learning Center. And that all totals up to $111 million that we have right there in, in front of you. Under Proposition B, we recognize the need for us to still address the Lakeview High School baseball and softball facilities. Uh, to include the locker room, restrooms, and the parking area. Uh, and we also recognize the need for a multi-purpose facility uh, within in the Central High School uh, that would seat 3,000 3, um, individuals in it, as well as working on the renovations within the Sarah Bernhardt Theater. Uh, the total to that comes up to the 34 million that you see right there. Uh, when we break this out, and look at Proposition A, uh, and you look from Alta Loma all the way down to McGill, what we'd like to do right now is run through what it is that we propose doing in each of those, as well as within uh, Glenn uh, and the Central Freshman Campus and the uh, Alternative Learning Center. As I present these to you, if you were to look at the color, color legend, if you're able to look at it, uh, the orange color in, at the top represents what it is that we would be uh, demolishing the next one, a purple type color, would be the renovation. Uh, additions are in white, new 
uh, canopies in certain areas of campuses will be in the blue as we highlight it. And finally, new parking and new fencing are, are, are you see down at the bottom of the legend. When you look at Altaloma uh, and, and look at the building, the first building was built there in 1940. Um, will be scheduled for demolition as we move forward, uh, as well as the buildings from built in 1955. Uh, when I showed this to my son, who also went to Altaloma, uh, he was in the 1955 building. He's now Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Air Force, going to turn 37 uh, tomorrow, but he was also here and went through that, that area right there. What we propose to do uh, in Altaloma is add additions around in the classrooms, a new dining facility, uh, we would put a new canopy over the, um, by the gym as well as the dining facility and also renovate classrooms around uh, that were not demolished in the, in the previous slide right there. That is Altaloma and the recommendation there. Moving on to Austin, same thing goes, 1955 type buildings. Uh, we had some that were done before, um, but we know we've got to work on the 1955 building, 1929 building as well. Uh, and, and what we need to work there, there's a 1940 building uh, also in Austin. What we would be doing is putting in new parking area right in there at the top, top side of that. We'd also put a new dining facility, a canopy that leads from the parking area to, and the dining facilities into the classrooms. Uh, and then we would also renovate those classroom areas and add a new entryway um, that would be for the security side of what it is we would do. Also in addition to that, you see a canopy leading from the classrooms to the gym. Within Bel Air, uh, what we have to do there, there is a lot uh, of existing work that will not be done, but we also know that we need to renovate uh, some of the areas within Bel Air. We know that that was worked on before, and where that renovation is, you can see on, on the slide right now. An additional area, I, I forgot to mention, there are going to be canopies that are, that are put there as well. Excuse me. Bottom. When we look at bottom, there are a lot that's already been done there. And, and what we're looking at, working on, is renovating some of the area uh, as, you, as you will see it. Uh, that renovation is the vestibule renovation, as well as a new canopy to the gym. Uh, new fire lanes are added for the school. Uh, as well as a fence, new fencing around the school for, from a security perspective. Total figure for bottom is also shown. Under buoy, a lot of work has all, also been done there before, um, but there is a need for renovation uh, as well as um, um, demolition in the area, and that's shown on the slide right now We'd be renovating the, the area down at the, towards the bottom of the, of the uh, slide and also demolishing two of the portable buildings. Total figure for that cost is also listed. And Fannin, what we're talking about doing there uh, is also looking at the areas um, that, that need renovation as well as demolition. Next slide shows that. We'd be putting in a new dining facility and classrooms uh, in, in there, as well as a new canopy, parking areas, uh, and an entry for the parents to drop off their, their students. Well, our students, their children, better put that way. Port Concho. And the listing that goes on there, a lot of work has already been done there. What we would be doing is some areas of renovation, and that is shown on the next slide. We'd be adding office additions, a controlled vestibule, new fencing uh, to control that for, for security purposes uh, as well in Fort Concho. Total cost there is also listed. Within McGill, an area where my brother played peewee football during that time frame. A lot of different things going on there. Buildings from 1938, 1945, 1955 as well would be demolished. And what would, what would take place in there in the renovation or dining, or is phase construction, uh, classrooms in phase one, 
uh, classrooms in phase two, or excuse me, cafeteria in phase one and a new kitchen and dining uh, area, classrooms in phase two, a new area for the parents to drop off uh, their, their children and visitor parking as well as new parking that would take place there. New fencing goes in uh, as well as a canopy to the gym. Total cost for McGill is also listed on the slide. When we look at our middle school in Glen, uh, areas for renovation will be shown uh, in, in what it is that we would be working on right now. And that renovation would include a vestibule control, a controlled vestibule uh, that was not covered with the bond, bond funds. Um, then we'd also have the cafeteria expansion as well as a new band hall expansion and fine arts uh, area that would be renovated. Gymnasium also, I believe, is reno renovated. Under the Central Freshman Campus, we would have the renovations that would take place uh, in, in the staging area, excuse me, um, renovations that would take place in the staging area, the new built, the buildings uh, shown there, built in 1927, 70, and 78. Uh, we would renovate the stage, the stage accessibility um, in the area there. We'd also renovate the restrooms, modify the restrooms, including ramp and stairs, accessible walkways between the buildings. Under, with the gym there, we'd have locker room accessibility and accessibility to gym seating uh, as well. That's within the central campus, central freshman campus, and the total cost of that. Alternative Learning Center is the next area and the final area that we would be looking at within the renovation. And what we're looking at and working to do there is some demolition as well as renovation uh, to, the, to the existing area. We'd have new construction that would take place uh, in the final slide for the alternate, uh, Proposition A, excuse me, for the Alternative Learning Center uh, within the classrooms and administration and then new parking uh, as well that would go in with that in that area. Under Proposition B, when we look at the Lakeview High School and also Central High School under Lakeview, right now uh, we would be looking at adding on uh, to the existing structure there and then also putting new parking. Uh, that would include new baseball and softball field houses and then also parking um, by the area as well. Cost is listed at the bottom. Excuse me, uh, one was not ahead. Everybody, all right, apologize. Within Central, when we start looking at the current gym that was built in 1958, we know that there is a need again from the survey for a multi-purpose center uh, to, for many uh, various activities to be held. And how it is that we would do that is we would put a new 3,000 seat multi-purpose activity center by the Sarah Bernhardt Theater where there's currently a parking lot uh, that exists right now. And then we would put a lobby, if you will, over and a new canopy over um, the entryway between the Sarah Bernhardt Theater and the multi-purpose center gym, uh, such that you could have access from the Sarah Bernhardt Theater into the areas within the multi-purpose facility uh, for things such as restrooms, things such as the snack bars or whatever that might be of available that are not available within the Sarah Bernhardt Theater. When you look at what it is that we're doing, uh, within uh, the Sarah Bernhardt Theater is we're also providing uh, areas for, for, for capability such as just use of restrooms. Uh, there's only one in, in uh, one restroom, male and female, uh, in the Sarah Bernhardt Theater right now. When you look at what it is that we're doing within the multi-purpose facility, uh, we're providing access uh, for, for uh, handicapped individuals that they could move around within the facility and move down on the floor if need be uh, to attend certain events 
uh, to include what we might be doing in robotics, how it is that we might be doing something in the arts, but they could get down on the floor and get down there safely, whereas right now, if we were to try to do it, uh, we'd have to do a fireman's carry uh, to bring them down there and move them around. In addition to that, we'd also be providing um, upgrades within, the, uh, within that facility uh, for restrooms as, as well as for um, providing the snack bars that you would, you would want to have uh, when you had certain events uh, in that type of area. When you look at the final roll-up in the proposition in the summary, under Proposition A, uh, we're looking at the safety, the ADA upgrades in the aging um, facilities, conditions in the classrooms at the schools, as I shared with you before, in addition to what it is that we would be doing uh, in, at, at the uh, Alternative Learning Center and the middle school. Within Proposition B, we're looking at the extracurricular activities that would be provided by having a multi-purpose facility. Uh, overall, uh, we, we know that if we were to stay the course right now uh, and not do any of this, the cost to try to address it later on, uh, the inflation cost alone is five to 8% per year uh, as we move forward. Uh, and so that is why we're bringing a holistic perspective back to you uh, in, a, in a Proposition A and a Proposition B. When we look at it overall, we recognize that we're giving uh, our community uh, four avenues to vote. They can vote yes, yes on Proposition A and B. They can vote yes, no on Proposition A and B. They can vote no, no, and they can vote no, yes. And so there's four different angles uh, that we provide, and that was one of the answers to the survey, uh, surveys that went out. But the biggest area that we know is that we want to take care of the students. We want to take care of our children. We want to make sure that they are in safe environments and primarily they're in environments that they can compete, not necessarily just in athletics, but in their, in their, in their um, academics. They can compete at a level uh, that we can send them out uh, into the world uh, and, and they, will, they will be great citizens and contributing citizens as well. Uh, when, we, when we look at this, uh, we also recognize the tax impact that comes with it. Uh, and we know that for every uh, $10,000, there's a one, one cent uh, increase in the tax. And so we, we work that um, as we move forward um, as well. Yeah, every $10 million. Tim, Tim, I, I said, Tim, okay, yeah, that's yeah, right. Thank Excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> and so as I step, step through these, what I'd like to do is call a couple of people to the podium who have, who have been a part of this before. And the first one I'd like to ask to come forward is Dr. Brian May. Uh, and present the perspective of what, what went on in the previous bond and where we're at today. Thank you, Jen Hawkins. Uh, yes, I wanted to give you a perspective. In 2008, we were, we were against the very similar circumstances. We had incredibly old facilities that lacked ADA especially, and I didn't know that's what you called it, the fireman's carry. But uh, we, were, we were actually practicing that on a regular basis of carrying handicapped children upstairs in, in a couple of elementary schools. And so elevators were needed. And since essentially what we did was we drew a line uh, under the Huckabee uh, evaluation of all the campuses of what we thought we could pass at the time. And then, of course, the, the, the problem hasn't changed, you know, with the central gym. And, of course, it was our, our, our planning at that time that, look, we, we have to have this academic space. We just have to have it. There's just, there's just no real way to get around it. And uh, we were afraid of interference from outside to make us do some of those pro projects. And so we put the central gym on a separate ballot or a separate uh, item to vote for or against. To tell you the truth, I've regretted it ever since because, in fact, it nearly passed <laughs> the central uh, multi-use facility. You know, it's just amazing to me um, that they can't have assemblies at Central right now, not just for athletic events, for anything, because there's nothing bit large enough to hold everybody. And to me, it's a tragedy. 
and I can't imagine how they function, but they do quite well. But we did that, and the, thank goodness, I think it was $117 million, if that's right, uh, on the academic space, and we did get that taken care of. So it was a win-win for everybody. And we actually experienced some savings as we went through that, where we were able to do some more for some of the campuses that really needed it. And, uh, but we only stayed specific to the campuses that were listed in that bond. We did not move over. So that's why what's left here. And so when we looked at it going forward after the vote we had in May, and uh, is that, well, we have to have this academic space. And so we're giving uh, the voting public a chance to say, well, I'd, I'll, I'll go for the academic space for safety, ADA, and classrooms, learning and delivering curriculum, but I'm not going to vote for the uh, athletic and the fine arts space. So that's, we're just mirroring what we did in 08 to see if we can get it across the goal line. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. May. We'd also like to ask Mr. Dan Baker to come forward to, if he would present his thoughts from being a former board member. Yes, sir. Well, it's, um, Good to be here um, on the other side. It's been a while. Um, but um, I thought uh, I wanted to give a perspective of 2008. Dr. May certainly made a um, good account of it. But uh, when you're sitting on that side, uh, I want to make a perspective about that. You know, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about, you know, I was uh, elected to be representative for Lakeview. But um, every board member up there, I know that you care about students and San Angelo students. That's how I felt. I know I represented Lakeview, but I know that it was about San Angelo students. And I'm going to say a few things that later on. But I was fortunate enough to be part of a board team that, uh, along with the staff and the bond, planning committee that worked on the 2008 and we were able to make a lot of improvements to the many campuses however as Dr. May talked about we had to draw a line and I remember that line I remember that night and looked at those campuses uh, below that line and I knew that um, those campuses needed just as bad as the ones that were above the line but we had to make a choice, and we did. Now, uh, we have campuses that the committee has uh, put above the line that are part of this uh, bond, and there are things that need to be done. I've watched uh, the feeder schools, the elementary schools at Lakeview High School that were done. They were done in a fashion that improved the classroom and improved the safety of each one of those buildings uh, for all those except for Alta Loma and Fannin, but it made a difference. I saw a difference in, in, the, in the faculty. I saw a difference in the students. I saw a difference in the community. It was after it was done, and now it's completed. Um, it's beautiful campuses, um, and that's what we want to see uh, here, and I hope that this community will do that, and I hope this community we'll see how successful the 2008 was done um, because I remember many times that we were, talked, were told that we have this much money because we have made some savings and we got to do a little extra. And then some campuses we got to do a little extra. So um, I hope that the community sees our track record or sees y'all's track record that we are good stewards toward that money that you, that you have allowed us to do. So I hope that they understand that this is improvements for our students, long range, and for this community to uh, provide. I want to say something about um, the multi-purpose use or the gym at Central. I know that I represent Lakeview, I did, but I can tell you that this board nurse four of you that I got to serve with, um, 
that this has been on the plate a long time, and it's, uh, it's, it's a tragedy, as Dr. May said, that that student body cannot come together and that the faculty out there cannot um, have a place to have that student body. I support that. I support it wholeheartedly. Um, and my vote will be for both of them because I think it's something that's needed in this community, something that we can be proud of. And I appreciate the time. Thank you. What I'd like to do before we close is call up the other committee leadership that, that were a part of, of bringing this proposal to you, starting with Krista Bradley, then Elizabeth Chambers, and, and closing out with Kristen Darby. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. My name is Kristen Darby, and I am a community member here this evening in support of this proposed bond. I am from San Angelo, and my husband is also from San Angelo. I went to elementary school here, junior high and high school in San Angelo. Our family moved back to San Angelo right before I had our third child almost five years ago. Our oldest two children are currently attending a public school in SAISD. Each of them have had one of my previous teachers, which I think is very special. First, I would like to compliment SAISD on their efforts to utilize their available funds towards continued improvements of our schools. However, these district funds can only go so far, and this is where the support and understanding of the community comes in. I have heard and understand community concerns, and those concerns are valid and they're not ignored. I can understand wanting answers from leaders regarding hard-earned money, but this bond is not, not about finding or giving answers to these questions. This bond is about wanting to show support for the children in this community and the teachers who choose to move to or come back to San Angelo to do what they believe in, which is giving students a fair chance to succeed. Although many of us from San Angelo attended these schools and may believe if it was good enough for me, it's good enough for them, which we should realize society has changed, buildings age, and safety remains to be a serious issue. For some children, this is their only safe space. We know teachers and students have a lot more to deal with in this day and age, and the last thing I want them to be concerned with is a water leak in their classroom, having to walk across a cut through street for their next class, or not being able to have all their friends and family to an award ceremony or graduation because of space. I would like to take any feelings of resentment from the community and change it into a feeling of pride for our city and the people who were born here, go to school here, choose to move here, and have a career here. As a community member, I feel a responsibility to help where I can, how I can. If our community takes the attitude, let someone else deal with it, then it will be our current and future generations who will suffer. It is hard to make a stagnant community a successful community. Without momentum moving us forward, we have no progression. The efforts and support of a few can change the lives of many, but in the case of this proposed bond, we need the efforts and support of many to improve the lives of many. I believe in our community and their support. Thank you very much. So they did another coup on me and only one of them spoke. <laughs> <laughs> in closing, what I will, I will tell you again, my wife and I also moved back here after having left back in 1978 in a 37-year career uh, in the military. Uh, we believe in giving back to San Angelo. Maria is a complete um, resident and, and part of the San Angelo Independent School District. And you, President Lehman, as you know that I came here and went to Lee Junior High mm -hmm. and graduated from Central and also graduated from Angelo State. We believe that we need to work 
uh, to get the San Angelo Independent School District and the facilities uh, at the level that they need to be, and we're willing to do that uh, individually, but as Kristen said, it's going to take a collective effort. We thank you for your time. Are there any questions? I'm sorry. Yeah, are there any questions? Thanks, General Hawkins. And I think he doesn't mind if I call him Ronnie since he, uh, we played uh, sports together and yeah. he was always a lot faster than me. <laughs> um, therefore, he went to Angelo State on a track scholarship and I ended up doing other things. Uh, but um, certainly we've known each other since the eighth grade, I eighth think. Grade. So um, thanks for your support of our community and certainly the work of everybody that's uh, on our long range uh, facility planning group. Thanks for all y'all's hard work. Do we have any questions? from our board team, any comments? Um, yes, go ahead, Amy. Okay. Um, so I remember hearing something, but I don't know the exact, I don't remember the exact details, but can you talk to a little bit more about um, the amount that was decreased, but then added back on due to inflation? I know we took off a bigger number than what it looks like was actually removed from the cost of the bond. Do you know those numbers? I believe uh, in, in looking at it, it's a five to 8% inflation cost. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're asking about yes, right there? I just remembered. And, and it, was, oh, yes. it was not reduced significantly because of that right there. The, the rise it's still the rising cost that Right. we're still dealing with right now. Right, because the final number looks like it was only a few million dollars, like $3 million, right. but it was actually, wasn't it like $15 million that was actually subtracted from the original I, cost? I believe it was right at the $15 million mark. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't have the exact number, but it, it was at that, at that point. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Sorry? Okay, we're saying something about the Lincoln track, but one of my disabilities after the military's <laughs> hearing, so you're going to have to speak up a little louder than that. I'm sorry. The Lincoln track? So we, so we, did, uh, so we did rec decrease, eliminate the Lincoln track as part of that and reducing the funds as well. And, and Huck Huckabee the, could the probably cost. help answer that too, but I think we, Mike, if you don't mind coming forward, but I think we also... Uh, looked at uh, specifically at other campuses and reduced, you know, some of the cost, kind of re-engineered and, and reconsidered, you know, what we were doing on some of the yes, campuses. Yes, we did. And we, we looked at every Even project. though the amount's similar, the projects are different, and the reason why the, the amount similar is, uh, as General Hawkins referred to, it's yes. referenced is the cost of inflationary cost of building. Right. Had we not changed anything, had we just gone back with the projects as they were in May, it would have been a five to seven million dollar increase, so you would have had to have had a bond of 153 or 154 million just to cover the inflation in the last six to eight months. So we took the opportunity and, and uh, the superintendent's lead and the committee as well in looking at each project and seeing what we could trim from each project and how it could be different. The district stepped up and took a couple projects off the plate. One of them was Lincoln Track, uh, said we can do that project, and so that's going to come out of their general fund, or that's the plan. And a couple other small projects like that, they eliminated a couple million dollars. Well, we were able to save some other monies uh, in looking at some places we were going to renovate that we said, well, they're okay as is today. And most of those were the classroom additions that you did in the mid-90s in, in that previous bond before 2008. So we were able to trim the total budget to now be coming to you with a total that's about five million less on Prop A and Prop B combined. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. And, and one thing I would add to that too is we also, because of safety was a concern and we wanted to address some safety issues this summer, we did some work that the camp, that the district paid for this summer as far as vegetables and and limited, yes. uh, limiting, in further limiting access, you know, we did some projects this summer That's because correct. we, it's important that we um, address safety issues. So we did some of that this summer out of fund balance money. Thanks. Other questions? Good question, Amy. Any other questions? Um, well, I was just going to mention. Uh, go ahead, Gerard. When speak in your mic, please. Y'all can't hear me, really. <laughs> Usually the loudest one. Um, 
when, when, when you were mentioning the, the, the uh, event center at Central, you know, certain examples came to mind of the things we could use it for other than just athletics. I mean, you have a middle school band concert, which, which currently the, the middle schools, when they have their band concerts, they're held at the, uh, out at the river stage. So you have 100 degree weather at the beginning of the year and you have the winter um, band concert where it's 40 degrees. Um, another thing, another example that um, this past year, I do know that they had an assembly, a guest speaker at Central, that they had to run him through four times at the uh, Sarah Bernhardt Theater, just for he could talk to all the students. So, um, and Mr. Baker uh, mentioned um, the work that was done at Hall of Mongoliad and Bradford. You know, um, when when we looked at those schools, they were they were they were in very very poor shape. And Mike remembers that we took a tour bus of people over there, and the smell that they smelled going in the cafeteria was just that that convinced a lot of them right there. Um, but one of the things we did when it came to safety, we do remember when, I do remember, um, since we were saving a little extra money on this and that because some things were coming in at a lower cost, we did enclose because the original plans for those three schools were to have the outdoors where the classroom is still open to the outdoors. And I think you remember this, Mike. We enclosed all those buildings to create a hallway all the way, and you still had that single access in the front, and then the Zens were were kept locked, you know, as safeties for safety measures. So there are a lot of things that we have done um, since 2008. Uh, I, I got a, a litany of things, but I'm just going to stop right there. Um, you know, the tax thing, the the increase. I know it's 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 something, but one thing we have done with this board since you know since I think since 2005. You know, we have kept it. We we have we have lowered the tax rate. We have lowered the tax rate, and that's one thing I do want to let people know is that we have lowered the tax rate. Um, I think when I got on the board, it was at $1.49 or $1.50, okay? It was that high at one time. Um, in 2008, when we did the bond, it, it bumped it back up to $1.33. Was it $1.33, $1.31? And we, since then, we have lowered it in the last 10 years to $1.21. So, you know, as Mr. Baker mentioned, we have been good stewards. And we're trying our best, and, and we're all concerned about all kids in San Angelo. And this bond proposal, I, I like the, 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 well, I like it. I like the, the two choices people do have. And I think the more and more that they start realizing and, and, and hearing that, that this is, we're finishing up what we started. You know, I think Mr. Huckabee's original, when y'all did the original plan, was $300 million worth of work. Now, with the 117 million, and then with this, and the additional 30, I think we're almost there to the 300 total fix that we were told we needed to do to fix it all at one time back in in 07. So, so I'm, I'm thank you for all of you. Thank you all for for all the work you've done. Y'all have done a wonderful job, and let's just keep moving forward. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Gerard. Any other comments from our board team? We may have some folks in the audience that want to speak, but let's uh, make a motion first. And I've asked Bill if he'd mind making uh, our motion. So would you do that, Bill? Mr. Lehman, uh, I move that we approve and adopt the, the order calling for a November 6, 2018 bond election for the San Angelo Independent School District in the total amount of $145,520,000. This bond election will feature two propositions, Proposition 1 for $111,480,000 and Proposition 2 for $34,000,000. $40,000. So thanks. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. So we have a motion from Mr. Dino and a second from Mr. Gallegos. Is there any further board uh, comment or questions? If not, I'll call for public comment. Anyone wishing uh, in the audience wishing to make public comment? Mr. Davis? Let me be sure and introduce who you are, Keith. Thanks. My name is Keith Davis. Um, I want to let all the committee board members know that the people who participated, you did a great job. I've had uh, several conversations with several individuals because the last bond I voted against, and I visited with a lot of people, and I've explained why. Uh, I agree. You, know, you hear a lot of comments. I don't like my taxes going up, but like anything, you have to pay for things that you need. 
whatever it may be, roads, whatever it may be. So my point is the way this committee has made recommendations to the board, and apparently the board is going to take this motion up, I think it's a good choice because I know my vote will be different next time as I vote, make my choices, whether I vote for Proposition A or B. But I think y'all, by the board itself, did that. Uh, as I explained to uh, several individuals, like in 2008, we liked to buy the whole apple. That was what was attempted here this time. I think you made some great choices. And to the committee, guys, you did a great job, a lot of hard work. And to that, I think y'all are gonna make a wise choice. Thank you very much. Thanks, Keith. I appreciate it. Anyone else wishing to make comments? Members of the board, staff, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Louis Pettis. I'm a local business owner here in San Angelo, Texas. Uh, just wanted to just make some comments here. I've been a past member of the San Angelo Board of Chamber of Commerce, past president of the Glenn Middle School, and I'm current vice president this year. I'm a proud husband to my beautiful wife, Amy Pettis, who's a school counselor at Crockett Elementary, and was prior to that was a Fort Concho teacher who taught next to Macy Smith in for, for, a, for a time or two. I'm also a proud parent to uh, two great SISD students. My daughter, Karina, will be attending the freshman campus this year, and my son, Andrew, is in the seventh grade at Glenn Middle School, and I think he's going to major in uh, Fortnite <laughs> play uh, this year. So. I was a member of the committee as well, the first time and the second time, and I will say that there's been a lot of work and a lot of dedication, a lot of thought, and some argument, but a lot of good discussion, and I think what's come out of this has been really, really well done. So I applaud the committee, I applaud the staff, and I especially applaud Huckabee. I think we've uh, kind of overlooked them a little bit, but they've put in a lot of work and have done a good job. And I just wanted just to encourage the public if they're listening, if they're watching this on TV, please exercise your right to vote. It's extremely important. People have fought in wars for us to vote. People have marched, people have rallied. And um, I think it's just our, it's our uh, duty as lawful citizens to participate. You may not like it and you may want to vote no and that's okay, but at least vote. Y para toda la gente que habla español, para toda la gente de de San Angelo, que son estudiantes y que son parientes y este, mis parientes, este, yo, quiero, yo quiero que ustedes votan en esta elección de bonos. Es muy importante. Por favor, por favor, por favor, voten. Gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else um, wishing to make any comments? Board, thank you very much for allowing me to come today, and, and the staff members. Uh, I also was on the a board, on uh, the committee with uh, with a lot of you guys that, that were, uh, you know, we're trying to make a commitment to to this community of San Angelo. Uh, it was hard, and uh, but we never gave up. We met in the cafeterias and we spoke with the parents, especially as. Uh, you were speaking in Spanish. We were there just to reach out to the diverse community that we live in. And I think it's so important that you continue to fight because we, we would not take no. And you were right, Dr. May, that uh, the, the multi-complex, uh, uh, it's very important. Um, in 2008, I was part of the committee. In 2009, I became uh, part of the staff for the SISD. And uh, working where I work now, I've, I take much privilege, but I know that we play at that facility also, and I'm a graduate of Central High School, and uh, to go there and still see the facilities it was when I was there, uh, it's time that we make a change. It's very important. It's very important for our community, like uh, Louie said, we need to get together and, and uh, grab somebody with you and take them to vote because uh, the, only, the only positive thing we have going right now is knowing that we know we can, we can pass both of these bonds. We can. Um, if we work together within the teachers, our community members, 
Um, the reason we came back as a retiree myself, the reason I came back to San Angelo is because I wanted to make a difference. And two of my daughters have graduated from Central like my wife and I did. But I have this little 17 month old now that in 15, 17, 18 years, I want him to, to, to use the same facilities, if not even better facilities, that we can provide for them. But only for us and St. Angelans to uh, get, come together and, and just look at the positive, because I think what we're, a lot of people are not looking at, the broad spring is, we're talking about the future. We're talking about these young, young students that we need to reach out to. It's so important. Um, so if we can all just come together and, and, and find, find these people that you know that didn't vote for some reason or another, and, and I commend you for, uh, for letting us know that you are changing. Uh, you've, you've seen a different perspective of what we need to do for this community. But I think it's very important for all of us to just come together, especially what we can do uh, those of us that were on the committee in 2008 committee, whatever we can do to help you guys now, because I think uh, this is going to this is going to be a very positive, positive uh, result. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, I appreciate those comments and um, the passion behind them. So thank you all very much. Any, anyone else uh, wishing to make any comments to our board team? Any further board comment? We're good? Okay, if, if not, I'll um, call our motion. All in favor of our motion, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. So thanks to all of our team again, and uh, we look forward to uh, the election in November. And uh, certainly uh, the responsibility, uh, we've called the election. Now let's do everything we can to uh, pass. And, uh, and hopefully uh, we'll all encourage everyone to vote. And get and go to the polls. So thank y'all. I'm, I'm gonna let us have a little bit of a recess, maybe 10 minutes, and then we'll be back. Okay, let's try to reconvene. That's all right. Yeah, so let's move forward if we could on our agenda. Um, our next item is item 10, which is uh, approval of our minutes. Do we have a motion to approve our minutes? <clears throat> Moved second. We have a motion from Mr. Parker and a second from Mr. Gallegos to approve the minutes of our board meeting July 19th, uh, 2018. That was our special finance, excuse me, and pre-agenda work, workshop meeting. July 23rd, our regular board meeting. And then we had a, a special meeting in July on July 30th, uh, which was a safety workshop. So um, does anybody have any questions about or need to make corrections to any of the minutes from uh, either of those three mini meetings? If not, all in favor of our motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. Um, I think we do have an act update on academic progress. Dr. Detloff says he's going to do that. I wonder how Shelley talked him into doing that. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Lehman, board members and staff and uh, audience members, uh, thank you for this opportunity to provide the academic update uh, this month. I want to kind of frame this discussion, circle back to our teaching for learning image that you see on the screen in front of you. Uh, and as educators are known for acronyms, uh, let me define these acronyms again for you. Uh, GVC is Guaranteed and Viable Curriculum. Uh, Dr. Ritter and our Curriculum and Instruction Office uh, has really done the lion's share of work in this area to make sure that we have an aligned, uh, streamlined curriculum uh, for all of our students. And she will discuss this aspect in just a minute. Uh, FPD is Focused Professional Development. So what are we doing as far in terms of teacher training to make certain that we are closing achievement gaps across our district? And then the data component. I do want to recognize on the data component 
that uh, recently state accountability ratings were released, our district received a C met standard. Uh, I also want you to know that as far as uh, I am concerned, this is, this is my responsibility uh, and I take ownership of this C and it is my responsibility for us to get better as an organization and a system. So I will do everything I can, including implementing action steps uh, to make certain our student achievement uh, rises in the near future. Uh, but we are also proud of the many pockets of excellence, as you uh, have seen displayed earlier this evening, uh, in our recognition and honor roll schools and individuals that receive these accolades. So as your superintendent, I may have received a C, but I want you to know that we have educators and teachers that are an A in the classroom. And we will continue, and I will make it my mission to continue to close uh, those achievement gaps across our district. Uh, when we highlight this, uh, we know that the state accountability, we, we utilize these metrics to get better. Uh, we also utilize multiple metrics across our district, uh, including formative assessment to get better at what we do uh, to help our academic gaps. Dr. Ritter's gonna talk to you uh, about some of the professional learning uh, that is happening across our districts, uh, our district, and also kind of talk to you about uh, some of the learning today and some of the action steps we're taking. I do, uh, before I step aside, I do want to recognize our board. When we look at data, we look at being evidence informed. Our board is evidence informed and I want our public to know that our board has utilized resources and provided the resources and matched them where the academic need is. So uh, I commend your bo uh, our board for those actions and I thank you for doing that. This will allow us to again improve learning across our district. So thank you for reallocating our current resources and placing them where the need is. Dr. Ritter. Thank you, Dr. Detloff. Mr. Lehman and members of the board, uh, we just wanted to provide an update um, to say, first of all, today was a fabulous day in San Angelo ISD. We had every single teacher in our school district engaged in professional learning in whatever content area they teach in. Um, we had, I think, every campus except for three hosting district teachers from across the district, every grade level combined, so that all the second grade language arts teachers were together, those reading teachers, the math teachers for every grade level were together, um, English one, English two, high school math. It was a powerful thing to go from campus to campus and go see, I went to eight different sites today myself and watched as our teachers are being empowered through the knowledge that they're gaining um, as we had some consultants helping to just make sure that we are developing our teachers in the way we need to be alongside this new curriculum that we have written with the support and involvement of, of total with our strategic planning process, over 600 people that have been involved in this process. With every phase of our curriculum development, 250 teachers and administrators, instructional coaches working together to create this customized curriculum for our students that now we're proud to say we have finished that process. We now have core content written for all of our core content areas in math and science, language arts and social studies. And that is what our teachers have been working on this summer. We had our curriculum rollout the day we had convocation in the afternoons, that was a great way to finish a great day. And then today we now have specific professional training for our teachers to support that curriculum as far as instructional delivery and best practice. So we feel that we are, again, empowering our teachers with skills and the ability to be able to customize what they are doing with instruction for students and to differentiate and individualize for our kids. And we know that we're going to be seeing the result of that this year. They're gonna be utilizing that data to help determine the path for every individual student, what they need in that classroom at every level, pre-K through 12th grade. So we're very encouraged and excited about this and we just wanted to report that to you and let you know that it's, it's really, it was a really great day today in San Angelo. Dr. Ritter, thank you and thank you and your team and our assistant superintendents, Matt Kimball and Shelley Hullin, for their work and, and our executive directors as well. Would you uh, discuss quickly about 
some of the initiatives and the percent gains that we've seen at one of our elementaries, our only elementary last year that was improvement required, and the gains that we've seen uh, from implementing the action steps that our board would like us to take with our other elementaries as well. Absolutely. We know that um, with Lamar Elementary School, which was an IR campus for us last year, that we really came in and the entire school year was spent with embedded coaching and working with them on focusing on, as we did, a deep dive into our data and determining our root causes of what, what was happening at that campus. It was about literacy, and we know that that's the case across our district, that it's something that um, we're having to focus on, and that's not something that happens overnight. But I will say with the absolutely just the collaborative work of our team, this whole group here, and the teachers there, I can't say enough about Sharon Lane and her leadership team and her teachers there. With um, some help, we had consultants coming in. We went in and did embedded coaching with those teachers along with intensive training and also with resources by providing them the resources with balanced level books that the kids need, that they needed for that instruction. We have students, um, we actually, some of the highest that we've experienced in this district with an 82% gain in some of the areas for levels of reading from the beginning of the school year to the end of the school year. And with that, we're happy to say we made incredible progress at Lamar. We are going to replicate that model across our district and provide that to all, all of our elementary schools. We are going to provide that intensive literacy support through tra training and we already have invested in resources of balanced libraries for all of our elementary schools and independent reading libraries for, I'm sorry, for our middle schools and the balanced literacy libraries for our elementary schools. And Dr. Ritter, would you also comment on the action steps and initiatives we have in place to really shore up some of our uh, instructional gaps uh, with our English language learners? Yes. We understand, and, and again, looking through um, our data and examining it, that's one thing that, you know, your state results can sometimes give you that, that window, that lens into it, and then we take a deeper dive into it to determine um, what is it telling us. And we know that this is an area of focus for our district. Our English learners over time um, are not making the progress that we would want to see. And that is due to, really, we believe, we know, research shows us that when you have gaps in literacy that we have, these are the students that are going to really um, show that result more than others. Uh, they are not get, gaining that academic vocabulary nor the level of comprehension and deep reading that other students may, you know, without a language um, barrier coming in, may have. So we have, before we even knew state results at all, we, we had recognized this as a need in our district. And so we had already, as of January, February of last, last year, determined that we were going to invest in providing materials, but also classes, courses we have at the middle school and in ninth grade, classes for our language learners, our English language learners to help close those gaps that must, it must happen. Um, and also really focusing on that in our elementary schools with the more intensive literacy focus, but in particular with these students, we know that we have seen incredible gains. I'll use Bradford as an example. Bradford Elementary School with a high percentage of English learners. Those were some of the students, now they're two years into doing the guided reading approach with balanced literacy. Those are some of the students that showed the highest gains on that campus. And when you have that kind of customized instruction through the guided reading balanced literacy approach, the gains are incredible. So we know we're on the right track. We have some gaps to fill. We know that we have that in front of us at middle schools and high schools, but we have um, trained groups of teachers to work with our students to hopefully realize some of these gains that we, I know we're going to see. Thanks. Any questions? Go ahead. Um, Just a quick Ms. comment. Flake. Going back to Lamar and the team there. Yes. Um, I have a friend who has had, she has three children. Her last one just graduated from Lamar this past year. And she said that she's had at least one child at Lamar every single year since it's been open. And she made a point to comment and um, tell me that this past year was the best year by far that she has seen at Lamar, both as a parent and for her students. So I wanted to make sure to pass that along to you and to Lamar. Fantastic. That's great to know. 
Other questions or comments? Mr. Parker? Okay. So thank you, uh, Dr. Ritter. We appreciate that. And Absolutely. I know uh, this year um, our board's going to be really focused on uh, student achievement and student performance. So we'll expect a, a regular update on, on you know, how we're uh, going to improve in every, every bit of our uh, schools where we need improvement. And certainly we're focusing on schools that need improvement, but we, we're not going to walk away from those that uh, – where we uh, where where we're doing well, we're going to yes. continue to do well at those campuses. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Sure. All right. Let's move to our item 12 consent items. Do we have a motion to approve our consent items A through G? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Hernandez and a second from Mr. Parker to approve our consent items. Uh, item A is consider um, superintendent's recommendations for personnel for school year 2018-2019. Item B is to consider uh, T, T test certified appraisers. Item C is to consider the appointment of a health advisory council for 2018-2019 school year. Item D is to present um, to consider TASB's uh, board policy update 111. Item E is to consider bid number 18-021. Uh, for athletic equipment. Item F is to consider bid number 18-022. Uh, this <coughs> bid is for office and classroom supplies and furniture. And item G is to consider bid 18-023. And this is a bid for uh, printer cartridges. As I mentioned earlier in our board meeting, uh, we discussed each one of these items at an earlier uh, pre-agenda board workshop. Uh, do we have any questions or comments or would anybody like to pull any of those consent items for further discussion? If not, do we have any public comment? All in favor of our motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, indicate by saying no. Our next, um, our motion passes. Our next item is item 13. Uh, consider bills, accounts, and financial statements for the month of July 2018. Move for approval. Second. So we have a motion from uh, Mr. Dendel and a um, second from Dr. Kingman. Uh, do we have um, any comments or questions concerning our bills, accounts, and financial statements uh, for July of 2018? Mr. Lehman, just a note to the viewing public that all these reports were reviewed at our pre-agenda meeting. Uh, in addition to that, all these reports can be found online. If you go to our website, um, saisd.org, uh, uh, if you'll click on the district tab, under the second column, you'll find a, a heading uh, called Financial Transparency, and that lists all those reports, including our checkbook on this and our effort at financial transparency. Thanks, Mr. Dindel. Uh, do we have any other board comments or questions? Any public comment? If not, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. Our next item is to consider our district's code of conduct book. Um, just so we can give Vic exposure to the public, we want to make sure that <laughs> Mr. Orlando comes forward. So thanks for being here, Vic. We appreciate you. Appreciate Thank your you. patience. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Um, Mr. Lehman, Dr. Detloff, members of the board, uh, because of Texas Education Code Chapter 37, annually we have to approve the Code of Conduct, which is the district's expectations for student behavior. However, this year, because it was a non-legislative year, uh, TASB did not have a legislative update because we didn't have a legislative session. So what I have done is I've followed their recommendation to revise our code of conduct, which will accurately reflect all the district practices that we will use for the 18-19 school year. I've updated the district contacts and the dates, and I present the San Angelo ISD student code of conduct to the board for adoption as required by law with only date changes and names of faculty that have been changed to uh, whenever we have a situation that will address that. So that's the only two changes non-legislatively. Any Mr. questions? Or Thanks, Mr. Orlando. We appreciate that. Are there questions for concerning our code of conduct? Where, yep. where it's available, help uh, yeah, parents understand how to access that? As soon as you approve it tonight, I'll have it posted on the website at 8 a.m. in the morning. Perfect. And I'll also have the student and parent handbook posted as well. Uh, and I've... That's not required to be approved by the board, right. but there have been a couple of changes and they'll be in, light, in yellow on there. One of them I will bring to your attention, uh, in accordance with the Director of Food Services, we've made a change to the amount of money that can be charged for a lunch. Uh, in the past, in the handbook, it was uh, up to $10. They felt like it was uh, more beneficial to 
uh, go all the way up to $12.50, which would cover a whole week if there was a situation. So they just have increased that a little bit to help our kids. Great. Thanks for that. And certainly uh -huh. those are available on our website. So yes, anybody, sir. Needs, anybody needs a copy of it, they can go out there and print it or they can read it uh, on the website. Correct. Other questions or comments concerning our um, code of conduct. Were y'all going to have any printed books of the code of conduct that y'all can uh, make available to parents? Upon request. On the campus, if they want to request one, they'll have one printed for them. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Gerard. Good question. Other questions or comments from our board team? Do we have a motion to approve? If not, I'll make a motion that we approve the district's code of conduct uh, for the school year 2018-2019. Second. So we have a motion from Mr. Lehman and a multiple seconds from Mr. Dindle and Mr. Parker. Uh, do we have any other comments or questions from our board team? Thanks, Vic. We appreciate that. Uh, any public comment? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. That covers our business for this evening. I don't think we need to go into, uh, or I, did, I didn't uh, get any uh, advanced warning that we needed to go into closed session. Um, our announcements are uh, part of our uh, agenda page so that we have a special meeting next um, Monday. That's our fourth meeting of the month. No, I guess just our third, our third meeting of the month. Uh, so we'll do that and adopt uh, our, our budget as well as the tax rate uh, next Monday. Um, um, our finance and pre-agenda board workshop is um, September 10th. And uh, Becky, I think I need to get with you and make sure Mr. Parker's going to be here because I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be here on the 10th. So we might need to uh, change that, but I will not be here on the 10th, but I will be on the 17th. And then uh, we're also headed to a convention at the end of the month in Austin. Uh, so um, I'm adverse to going to Austin during football season, but you know maybe we'll figure out some way to, you know, <laughs> maybe we'll figure out some way to stomach it. So uh, that's uh, September 28th through September 30th uh, in Austin. So. Um, we usually leave on Thursday, and, and uh, we'll uh, work on arrangements and travel and stuff like that as we get closer to that date. Is there any other business that our board team needs to cover this evening um, or any items that y'all would like to be uh, placed on a future agenda? If not, and hear no objection, we'll stand adjourned.